the aunt of Chen Yun. We will be talking about Shen He, the loathsome transcendence. So let's begin. Shen He is a playable cryo character in Genshin Impact. The daughter of an unnamed exorcist couple, Shen He was taken in and raised by Cloud Retainer. As a disciple, following a traumatic incident by Shen He's father during her childhood, Shen He is a tall female in Genshin Impact. Her vision is cryo, and her weapon is a polearm. Her birthday is March 10th, and her constellation is being. Krista Dolores, and she comes from Liwei. Her affiliation is with Crown Trainer Retainer's abode, and her special dis is is Heartstring Noodles, a variant of the Dragon Bread Noodles. She became a playable character on January 5th, 2022. The four voice actors of Shen He in the localizations of Genshin Impact are Chelsea Quoka in English. Zi Chen in Chinese, Ayaka Kwasumi in Japanese, and Yi Yilan Hanjin in Korean. Shen Hong goes by two titles, which are Losum Tenderis and Eternal Soul Amidst the Mortal Realm. Shen Hong is relatively a tall woman with a fair complexion. She has long, silvery white garnet hair which then fades to black at the tips. Her hair is parted off center with evenly cut locks that flow just past the chin length. Framing her face one side covering her right eye, the rest studied in a low, loose, dick braid fastened at the top with a red cord in the bow with a with required vision mounted on it. Her outfit consists of a black blackless bodysuit that fades into turquoise at the legs. It extends to her hands, covering her little middle finger with a gold stud on the, each of his knuckles. At the back of her bodysuit is an arc article bearing bearing resemblance to coattails, consisting of white fabric patterned with grey. She wears a car cropped white and grey sleeveless compound on the top. Her accessories consist of a detailed white and black curve head headpiece and a red clover leaf knot with a tassel as well as earrings on her right ear. Originally part of an exorcist clan, Shen Hun originally had a happy life as a child until her father attempted to sacrifice her to a malevolent god in order to bring back his wife. While well, Shen Hun managed to defeat the remnants of the god herself, the incident scarred her for life, believing herself to be a cursed child and began growing on a homicidal tendency. Despite the adeptus' attempts to contain it, they had only done so by binding her soul with red ropes, which has also caused her to become most indifferent. Even with the red ropes surpassing her homicidal tendencies, Shen Hun often contempts the most violent means to eliminate others and is almost always easy to anger obliterating her surroundings whenever her emotions get the best of her. She draws hostile looks at Shen Chu, believing him to be a threat to others. Despite this, Shen Han ultimately wishes to fit in human society and places great trust in the Traveler. She prefers speaking with a small number of people at a time. As a result of living with the Adepti, many of her follower people worship her as one of them something which deeply troubles her despite stating that she is just an adept disciple. She enjoys sampling small qualities of food in a manner similar to albedo. 
Due to having a limited diet in the mountains, Xiang Han is used to eating plenty of herbs despite clearly despising their taste. Dawnstar and Piercer is Shun Hon's normal attack. The normal attack performs up to 5 constructed spear strikes, while the charge attack consumes a certain amount of stamina to lunge forward, dealing damage to opponents along the way. And finally, the plummeting attack plunges from mid-air to strike the ground below, damaging opponents along the path and dealing AoE damage upon impact. Spring Spirit Summoning is Shun He's elemental skill. The Frosted Dew, Silvery, and Dense shall exercise all demons, grants all nearby party members the Icy Quill effect, and deals cryo damage in different ways based on whatever it is pressed or held with. With press, it rushes forward together with the Talisman Spirit, dealing cryo damage to opponents while in the path. Using hold, it commands the talisman spirit to deal AoE quiet damage and using Icy Quill. When normal charge and plumbing attacks, elemental skills, and elemental bursts deal quiet damage to opponents, the damage dealt is increased based on Shen Shenhun's current ATK. The Icy Quill's effects will be cleared once the deterioration ends or after being triggered to a certain number of times. When held rather than pressed, the Icy Quill effect lasts longer and it can be triggered more, more times. When one Quayo damage instance strikes multiple opponents, the effect is triggered multiple times based on the number of opponents hit. The number of times the effect is triggered is calculated independently for each party member with the Icy Quill. Divine Maiden's Deliverance is Shen Hun's Elemental Burst. This unleashes the powerful power of the Talisman Spirit, allowing it to roam free to this plane. Dealing AoE Cryo Damage, the Talisman Spirit then creates a field that decreases the Cryo Rest and Physical Rest of opponents within. It also deals Periodic Cryo Damage to opponents within the field. Diaphic Embrace is Shen Hun's first Ascension Pass skill. When an active character within the field created by Divine Maiden Deliverance can gain 15% cryo damage bonus. Spirit Communion Seal is Shen Hun's fourth Ascension Pass skill. After Shen Hun uses Spirit Spring Spirit Summoning, she will gain all nearby party members the following effects. With press, elemental skills and elemental burst damages increase by 15% for 10 seconds, and using hold for normal charge and plumbing attacks damage are increased by 15% for 15 seconds. Precise comings and goings is Shin Hun's utility passive skill. It gains 25% more rewards than dispatched on the Liwei expedition for 20 hours. Shen Hun was originally from a branch of family in Exorcist, but due to a series of consequences, she became the disciple of Adeptus. She is a student solely of Cal Retainer in name, but her impressive concentration and intelligence quickly won several other Adepti over. She would go on to learn from all of them, eventually becoming a master of the Adeptal Arts in her own right as a mortal. She's very much looks the part as well in her unique temperament and manner of carrying herself. Indeed, it would be no estimate to name her a true adeptus of Mohan meeting for her the first time. However, it is precisely due to the long years of tutelage that she has lacked company save for the adepti and odd passing illuminated beast. This isolation has caused her to grow distant and indifferent. Sometimes a few rumors will escape from Liwei's small community of pilgrims to make the rounds in the city's back streets. These tales often depict someone being in a hopeless situation in some desperate place, when suddenly, a wandering white-haired adeptus comes to their rescue in the nick of time. Most such stories are a collection of lovely, intoxicating cliches, little different from the old-told street tales of faded marriages 
and the like. But if one were to ask that why hear Adeptus to tell the story, it would be take a vastly different shape. Some annoying creatures who their way into the mountains from time to time. I simply get rid of them to prevent them from disturbing my master's meditations. If someone, if some people did wind up getting caught in the crossfire and injured, well, it was their decision to come here. There isn't much I can do about that. Shen Hun is in all likelihood the least accustomed to mortal life amongst those who take on the adeptal appearance. Having been secluded, secluded in the mountains since a young age, she lacks experience and common sense, which makes it difficult for her to relate to people normally. To ordinary people, there are many situations to any given problem, but Chen Hun, only any situation is that the simplest and most direct one way may as well not exist. For example, she almost never considers interrogation as a solution to being at cross purposes with others, mostly resorting to threats instead. After all, it is simple and efficient. A good solution, no? She has also spent much time rummaging or on problems that are truly eccentric. For example, why do you need it to pay for food? Is there any difference between imitating civilizations and imitating bandits? She even truly believes that her master cloud retainer is a brilliant and eloquent conversationalist. In a certain sense, she can be considered very pure. Much like a child, she relies on her chaotic yet straightforward institution and logic to get her through life. Mountain Shabriner once had a say about her. Little Shen Hung is one not only the strongest and most, she also possesses a unique character. She knows not the world, understands not common sense, distinguishes few cuisines, and acknowledges no hierarchies. It may not be such as an easy thing for Cloud Wei Trainer to tutor her. Li Wei has no lack of folk tales about meeting the Adepti, and many of these constant relative nobodies whom an adeptus took under their wing, thus evaluating their greatly. However, the circumstances under which Zhen Hun's fate became tied to the adeptal abdobes was not such a glorious thing. If anything, it was an experience characterized by anguish. When she was five, her mother passed away and her father having loved his wife dearly found that agony hard to bear. Over time, the agony turned into resentment and this resentment birthed obsession, by which he was driven wandering throughout the land like a mad gone, man got mad. He left for close to a year, never stopping, never able to sleep soundly, ever searching for some technique that might bring his wife back. Alas, when the year was almost out, he returned to a joyous frenzy. Her father had brought him a secret, that w a secret art that was known as fate transference. By making a ritual sacrifice to a seedly summoned by the art, a living person's body could be exchanged for a dead one's life. At that time, Shen Hong was yet utterly unaware of the disaster that would befall. She was only an ordinary child, overjoyed that at last her long absent father returned. He claimed that he had a surprise awaiting for her in a cave in the mountains behind and that he would take her there immediately. She was ecstatic. But the scene that followed would be burned into her mind forever. Her father summoned the hinderous, horrifying black seedly into the cave, its blood red eyes carving for electrical life first. So replied, Jin Hun knew not from who, whence it came.
nor what it wanted from this place. Cries often paralyzed people. One thought only, however, crept into the young Shinhun's mind. This creature wanted to eat her, but she did not want to die. She wanted to live. Gripping her mother's keepsake, an exorcism dagger, she for faced it that dark seedly, temporarily yet result. Several days later, an adeptus following the trail of great evil would investigate the cave, only to find the little girl collapsed inside, spent, famished, perched, her life hanging by a dread. Taking pity on the less ruinous fate, and seeing that she possessed a great talent, having repelled some terrifying force on her own, the adeptus would bring her back, heal her, and instruct her in the adeptal path. If not for that, Shinhun would not be here today, or be as she is. Even the most dividend heart cooled from living in training in the mountains for over a decade might sometimes experience strange surges, so it was with Shenhun on impulse she came down from the mountains one night to return to what was her home. She did not know how she felt about her home or her family. She was all merely driven by some nebulous desire to live in the house that was once hers and to see what became of her father lost in his obsession. She learned from the neighbors that he had passed away several years prior only when she got there. Her childhood home and also been demolished by pawnbrokers and thus had all the traces of her memory dissipated. She did not care about the attention she was attracting and did not answer a single one of the questions asked by those in the vicinity. She simply stood there, listening to the howls that swept through the depths of her heart. Was it hatred, mania, relief? They were all there, and yet none terrified her for even an instant, it was as if her heart were an odd well without whipples. No, like a burdened well with no water upon which there might be ripples. She stood there for a long time before departing again before the astounded eyes of all. Each step was slow indeed, but she never once turned back. Lyre has its own fortune-telling, destiny-reading methods similar to astrology. Of these, there are two fates that people seek to avoid at all costs. One is that the solitary star, which dedicates that one will be separated from friends and family living alone all one's days. The other is disastrous evil which means that one will face many hardships and perils. When the Adepti rescued Shun Hun, Moon Carver did once read her fortune. The signs show that she was marked by both the solitary star and disastrous evil, and that she was also plagued by incense harm maternal urges. She was thus a person of superiorly ominous destiny doomed to harm both herself and others. To ensure that she grew, could grow up safely and not harm any innocents, the Adepti bound her soul using red ropes. This binding had the effect of restraining both her evil fate and her violent tendencies, but also sacked many emotions that should have originally belonged to a human. From then on, she became more and more disaffected by trivial matters, and even things most might consider importance were but dust to her. She became ever less human and ever more likely a lovely yet cold statue. But surprisingly, she felt something stir within her when she encountered the traveler from a distant land. Long dormant emotions, now strangers to her, come loose all at once from the depths of her fate's taboo. Perhaps it really was as Mooncover once said, that heaven might dictate fates, but destiny's tale is written by mortals. The tale of Shun Hun and the mortal world had not yet ended. 
Once upon a time, Shun Han had a full head of black hair. When she was first brought to Mount Hulao, she would not say a word. The only thing she provided willingly to do was to climb the mountain and watch the sea of clouds. It was well, however, that she would sleep when tired, drink the dew of the mountains when thirsty, and would chew on the few stalks of chinching when hungry. Cloud Retainer took this all in, but did not disturb the girl, instead making this comb of white jade from a sacred stone and giving it to her. The adeptus said that if she ever wished to serve her tie, sever her ties with the mortal world and enter adeptal tutelage, she should brush her hair twice, thrice, with this comb, and it would continue counted to the right of apprenticeship. Shen Han did exactly as the adeptus said without any hesitation. It's something strange happened then. For as the jade comb brushed through Shen Hun's hair once, a layer of black rocks turned a frosty silver from the root to the tip. On the second brush, but half her hair remained dark. When this process was complete, only a falling curtain of snow remained. Today, Shen Hun still keeps the comb on her person as a symbol of her connection to the Adepti. Through her years of training, she has long since come to understand the meaning behind those three brush strokes. The first to unroot unless useless anxiety, the second for the sake of joy and sorrow, and the third to walk the path into old age without regret. Few people know how the young girl in the cave intended as a sacrifice by her own father had been able to stand against the monster for days and nights on end by herself. Though Shen He was born into an exorcist family, her mandate father had not taught her a single thing about exorcism, and like many at the innocent age, she was also wholly unused to facing life's perils alone. But in the if for the cave the felt of parental protection indeed betrayed by my by Kin, Shen Han underwent a metamorphosis. Just as Moo's covers readings had shown, the sleeping Calamorous fates, violent urges, an unyielding spirit, if in her burst their bonds all at once. Those things served as an unseen shield, an invincible blade, arming the girl's fatal form. They gave her strength, gave her claws and fangs, allowing her to attack that winched creature before her, to sear to tear it to shreds to provoke that she, and not it, was the cruelest evil that stalked the darkness. Their life and death battle across the next few days and without end, hunter and hunted switched to places many times, the conflict locked in settlement. As the shadow of death loomed large, the gods looked it upon the extraordinary girl with favor. With the bright crystalline object falling into Shen Hun's hands, the balance tipped incorrectly in her favor and the victor was decided. The vivid icy light pierced through the dark like sky glow, showing the path to the future. In the past, it had guided Shen Hun from her miserable fate in the future. It would also lead her back to the mortal realm. Shen Hun's name means a mortal crane. Using an old meaning of the word Shen in the past, the word Shen meant immortal. In the sense of Dallas Xian, also known as Chinese immortals, whom the Adepti are modeled after, however, the word Shen has now replaced it to describe divinity. 
While Shen no longer has a standalone meaning, the use of Shen rather than Zhen in her name could be a play on her being close to or mistaken as of the Adepti, but not being an Adeptus herself. It may also be an intended to the synonym of Jianhe, Crane of Jian, Immortals Adepti, a poetic name for the Red Crowned Crane in Mandarin. The Red Crowned Crane is regarded as one of the most beautiful and sacred birds in Chinese culture, and considered to be a riding animal of Zhang. The red excess color of Zheng He's attire may be inspired by the color pattern of this crane. Her constellation in Chinese means scattering of worries, contains the play of the words comb and scatter. Found in her name card's description, it also means crest of sorrow. Fact 1, Shen Hun's hair changing from black to white is a means of calming away worries is ironic. This is a sense that usually the early onset of white hair means the one is full of worries. The irony is also highlighted in her name card's description. Fact 2, Chen Hun refers to Shen Hun as his aunt, based on her voice lines they are blood-related and hail from the same clan, although the English translation does not indicate which side of the family they are related by. In the Chinese translation, Chan Hun Yun calls Xin Hung Jia Yi, which simply refers to aunt as the youngest female sister female cousin of the speaker's mother. This would mean that Shen Hun is Chan Yun's maternal aunt. Shen Hun was not mentioned to have any siblings, meaning that she is likely one of the cousins of Chen Hun's mother. Fact 3 According to the records of a changing village, a branch of family of exorcists used to live in the east of the village. However, the mother would die of illness, the young daughter would go missing. And shortly after, the father would hang himself on a tree in the yard of his own house. The young daughter of this family is implied to be Shen Hong. Fact 4. Although Shen Hong's stories clearly state that she did not learn any exorcist arts from her family, she is able to use techniques similar to exorcist arts. Shen Hong refers to Shen Shen Han as an adept exorcist upon witnessing her abilities. Although there is no clear explanation, it is possible that the adeptal arts which were taught to Shen Han by Cloud Retainer are related to exorcist techniques. The ledger might have descended from the former. And that is Shen Han. Next time we'll be going over Wang Ming's restaurant's head chef, Zhang Li. So see you next time.